Hello and welcome to Take Time. I am your host, Patrick Marlette, and today let's talk about the ultimate Flieger. That's right, because today I have in my hands the Tissel, 40 millimeter Tissel, Tissel, Tissel? Someone's gonna have a pronunciation for me. Tissel 40 millimeter pilot watch, AKA the Flieger Destroyer. That's how they market it on their website, so I'm just gonna use their language. This is a type A style pilot's watch, and of course, it has all the hallmarks of your traditional Flieger. The only thing is, there is a Japanese movement inside of this watch, and uh, there's really not much else to say. I mean, this looks like a pilot's watch that I've seen before. I mean, there are a ton of these out there in the world. Uh, what's to mark the difference between this and the next one? Perhaps the craftsmanship. Let's talk on that today. But first and foremost, this watch is being lent to me by a subscriber of the show who will remain anonymous. So thank you so much for sending this my way. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot that you trust me enough to lend me such a valuable watch. And uh, along with its original accessory, the one that's on it now, it really does mean a whole heck of a lot. So thank you so much for providing this watch. Now, if you are new to the channel, I like to review items by starting with the bad and then moving on to the good before giving my final verdict on a review item. So let's start with a bad note, a major bad note. I really hope there aren't any to sell fanboys out there that are gonna be offended, but um, tell me if you notice it. I'm not even gonna say what it is. Just tell me if you notice it first. I'm gonna leave this on the screen for 10 seconds. Okay, 10 might be too long. Um, do, you, uh, do you see what I'm looking at? It's right, right in this region right here. This crown. This crown is misaligned. At first I thought maybe the dial was just a little warbled. Maybe it was, the dial was rotated this way or that way. And I looked at it and I measured it. I got some, some paper out. I got some, some measuring tools out and I looked, and I'm like, well, no, it's not the dial. That crown is definitely, unless it was intended to rest at the 255 position, uh, the crown is definitely not resting neatly at three o'clock. It's just gravitating just above that mark. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty bad. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna comment in the comment section saying cheap Chinese junk. You may be right. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take that away from you this time. I don't think you need to say Chinese manufactured junk all the time, but in this instance, yeah, I think this was an oversight on their part. The crown is definitely misaligned on this product. I'm gonna agree with everyone there. Again, to the fanboys, I'm sorry. That's just how I received this product. There's no helping this. But yeah, you know, I can't help but look at this watch. I've been wearing it for a little while now. Every time I look at it, my eye immediately gravitates towards the misaligned crown. And it's a shame because everything else about this watch looks like a Stoa, looks like a Laco, looks like every other Flieger I've seen um, on average. And this is a really, really nice affordable alternative to those items. So is there enough working for it to look past this? Um, I don't know. And their customer service? I don't know. I don't, I don't own the watch, guys. I'm sure there's going to be someone out there telling me to just write them up and send this back. Well, it's not, it's not my watch, so I couldn't care less. In case, uh, v viewer who let this into me, uh, if you wanted to send it back, let me know how that goes for you or if this bothered you at all or if you've noticed it. And if you did notice it, I'm so sorry. That's a negative, that's a negative for me. That's a pretty bad note. Um, the other one has to do with the original leather strap. Now I have it on a Rios 1931 strap instead right now. This was actually lent in with the watch because it was thought to be a better match. I totally agree. I cannot take it off the strap. It's so nice. And one, it has the rivets so it looks like a traditional Flieger. Two, I like the tone of brown a little bit better. So good choice there. This one is a, uh, you know, a chocolate brown. Uh, doesn't look that good. It doesn't taper at all. It's not very comfortable on the wrist. Uh, this is a bad note. Um, I'm told it looks, <laughs> I'm told it was the George Costanza of leather straps and I will agree. Now you all may interpret that however you choose, but I definitely agree. This is certainly the George Costanza of leather straps. It's just a little too awkward on the watch head and on the wrist. And I'll provide you guys with a wrist shot of that a little bit later. Now, if it weren't for the misaligned crown at the 255 position, this would be a pretty ideal 
Pilot Watch. I've really got nothing else to say but good things regarding this watch. Now, just so you guys know, this watch measures about 40 millimeters in total width, excluding the crown, obviously. It's got a lug to lug width of 49 millimeters. It is 11.5 millimeters thick at the apex of that crystal, and it has a 20 millimeter lug width. The case is obviously made out of stainless steel. You have a sapphire top crystal and a mineral bottom crystal, but these guys weigh in at about $330. For that price, you're getting a whole lot of watch. My first good note is actually about the Miyota 90S5 movement inside of this watch. It has a 40 hour power reserve, hacking, hand winding, all of the niceties you'd expect from a modern movement, as well as a 28800 beats per hour beat rate. So it's gonna have a very nice sweep when you go to look at it. And you can get a good look at that movement here through the display case back. It's held up quite admirably in day to day use. It's kept great time as this is a time only watch you'd expect no less. And um, I have to say, I like the use of exhibition case back here. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to appreciate this watch just a little bit more, especially because pilot watches are usually very subtle in their appearance and aesthetic. So it's nice to have that on the back for just a little bit of added flair. The handset on the front is the right length and the dial is well in proportion with those hands. and. I quite like reading this layout. It's, it's extremely legible. It's just as you'd expect a Type A Flieger to be. Um, the only thing is I could not find any information regarding the blued hands, whether they're traditionally uh, heated blue steel or if they're just made to look like heat treated blue steel hands. I would imagine the latter there. I don't believe these are heat treated blue steel. If you can verify that, that'd be great. But uh, they show off a little too much blue, um, which is normally an indicator as to whether they are actual or not. But the color tone of the blue is quite nice and it looks authentic enough. There are two types of crowns you can receive with this 40 millimeter pilot watch from to sell. And I think this is the one to go for. It's got a nice grip to it. It's very traditional and it feels great on the wind. It's, again, it's very easy to grip. It doesn't bother you on the wrist and it's just another little notch on the aesthetic wheel that this watch so desperately needs because it is a very bland looking watch otherwise. So accents like this are always welcome in my opinion. I think the case finishing and details overall are pretty good for this price range. Again, at $330, um, you don't expect too much from a watch, but this definitely is a cut above the rest. And I have to say, I quite like the brushing detailing on this case. It just looks good overall. And I also think the dimensions of the bezel alongside the case work perfectly. I like the slight dome to the crystal. Again, it adds just a little bit of life to this watch that it could so desperately use. Because again, you know, these, these type A Flieger designs are very simple and utilitarian in purpose and in looks. So it's always nice to have minor details to further accentuate the watch. Now, before I give you my final verdict on this watch, I'd love to leave you all with a wrist shot, uh, one on its original leather strap and the other with this alternative strap, which I think is, again, an awesome option for this. Uh, with the money you'd have left over from this purchase as opposed to another Type A Flieger, you can definitely afford to buy a couple straps for this, and this is one I would recommend. Now, here's what the watch will look like for all of your admirers on the original Costanza style leather strap. Again, it's just a little short, and I, I, it, the fact that it doesn't taper is very unflattering, in my opinion. It's just not a great looking strap. And now when you're going to take it in, it's gonna look a little something like this. As you can tell, it's missing those classic rivets near the lug ends. And it's just a look that I feel is customary with these types of watches, that is, Fliegers. Um, in general, I prefer them to have those uh, studs right there next to the lugs. I think it looks better, either single or doubled up. Um, it's just a good look. And it's unfortunate they didn't come stock, uh, at least with this 40 millimeter option, with that type of leather strap. 
And here is what the watch will look like on a more traditional Flieger style strap. And as you can tell, again, you know, the finishing on this leather strap is impeccable. It's unfortunate that this does not come with a watch, but just so you guys know what this might look like, again, on a more traditional style leather strap for a pilot's watch, it looks a little something like this. And again, it adds to that character, it adds to the overall look, and it makes us feel more and more like an authentic Flieger. And that's the thing with Fliegers, there's only so much you can do to diversify the look of them. I honestly think they look best on these leather straps, although I've seen people place these on bun straps and a variety of different nylon straps. It'll look good with pretty much anything because it's so simple, but this is definitely the most traditional way to go. Now, I don't know what to sell's customer service is like. It could be amazing, it could be awful. But depending on how well their customer service is, if you got something that was machined poorly and can return it to get something back that's you know perfect and, and flawless, well then this is a really good deal. So far as bang for your buck is concerned. To sell appears to only really make homage watches. That seems to be what their market is, um, particularly their divers. I've, I've heard a lot about their dive watches. I've seen a lot of their dive watches. I'm not interested in their dive watches, but a lot of folks say they're constructed extremely well and they like them a whole heck of a lot. So as the more sociably acceptable homage watch, I think getting one of their pilot's watches is probably a good route to go. Again, at sub $400, you're getting a whole lot for the money. So that's really awesome if you want a type A style pilot's watch like this, that's a really great route to go. Hopefully they'll be good about returning or exchanging watches that come up with manufacturing issues. But otherwise, for $330, what the heck? To sell is a brand for folks that want the style of another watch, but not necessarily the cost. Plain and simple. Now gang, if you found this video informative or entertaining in the least, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little something like this guy. If you have friends, forums, or groups that are interested in picking up a to sell watch, particularly one from their pilot range, maybe share this video with them first. Uh, a little bit of a cautionary tale here today with how the case was manufactured. But if you luck out with a good model and or if their customer service is up to snuff, you can walk away with a really great watch. So feel free to share this video with them if they're interested in picking up one of these Fliegers. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I do videos like this twice a week. So if you're interested in watch content, this might be the home for you. And if you'd like to see my videos release precisely when they release, you can hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button and you'll see exactly when they air. Again, my name is Patrick Marlad and thank you for the time.